Welcome to the Great Plate Debate, where we debate about what's great on a plate. Today, we will debate about Filipino cuisine since we are celebrating Filipino American History Month. We will go over our preferred brands, our favorite dishes, and debate whether something is overrated or underrated. I am here with Chef Levon, and I am Chef Robbie. And as Filipino Americans, we are here to debate about the Filipino dishes that we have here in America and debate about Filipino snacks that we have as well. So we will start with a segment called This or That, starting with Pandasal, soft or toasted? I would say soft because I like to eat it right out of the bag when I get Pandasal. Mm. How about you, Chef Sivan? I'm gonna have to go with soft as well. Soft, nice. Yeah, soft. I like it soft when it's, uh, you know, especially when it's nice and warm. Mm -hmm. And when you kind of like tear it apart, I feel like you really get that almost like that perfume of pandasal yeah. that just hits your nose. All that fluffiness. Yeah, and it's just like, as you're tearing it, it almost <laughs> kind of like breaks apart, like yeah. nice. Oh yeah. Kind of like, not flakes, but just nice little strands. Yeah. Adobo. Robbie, do you like a more vinegar forward adobo or do you like a more soy sauce heavy adobo? Personally, since I like saltiness better, I would go for soy sauce heavy. Mm. How about you? I'm gonna have to go with vinegar. Vinegar. Yeah, I love the the sourness, like mm. that tang yeah. that you get from the adobo, especially when you're pouring that all over your rice too. Yeah. Oh yeah. I also think that the vinegar kind of just complements like fatty meats too, when mm. you have maybe like a pork rib adobo. Yeah, that makes sense. We have carbs. Would you prefer rice or pandasal? Mm. Um, for me, rice all the way. Rice all the way. I'll take rice over bread. Yeah. Any time for sure. Yeah, I think it's just. You can eat it any time of the day. That's true. And enjoy it with all sorts of foods. That is right. And for me, rice as well. It goes with more options when you're trying to eat a meal. And I feel like bread also does, but there, you can only eat so much with pandasal. I feel like sinigang and pandasal don't go together, but rice and sinigang definitely go well together. Okay, tinapa. With or without skin? I would say with skin. I've had it with skin ever since I had it growing up. So that's what I'm used to. So I'll say with skin. Ooh, with How skin. How about you? Oh, this is one of those things that's either or for me. Or this is one of those things where I feel like, it, yeah, I can have it with or without skin. Both are good. Uh, I think I like it with skin if the skin is, has a, a snap to it or a crisp. Mm, yeah. Sometimes when the skin is soggy, mm. I'm not really a huge fan of that. Right, right. But if there's like a little bit of crisp to it, then I, you know, I'll enjoy it. But when it's soggy, sometimes it, it just... Might as well no, go without skin. But I do like fish skin. Though. Right. Moving on to our next one, we have lumpia. Fresh or fried? Oh, this... <laughs> Man. Do you want healthy or crunchy? <laughs> I, I think fried food trumps anything or, oh, like, yeah. any day. <laughs> so oh, yeah. I'm going to go with fried. Uh, if it's not fried, lumpia... That's a roll. <laughs> uh, no, that's, a, that's a... Yeah, that's... That's a that's spring a roll. roll. <laughs> How about you? I'm going to have to go with fried as well because it's... Crunchy. It's amazing. And yeah. it tastes, tastes amazing. And that concludes this or that. Next up is overrated or underrated. Starting with canned sardines. <laughs> overrated or underrated? I would say underrated, but the thing is I haven't had it in a while. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd ha I did have a lot of canned sardines growing up and ones that I enjoyed. So I would say underrated. So, you know, I think that Ligo and that, like those types of sardines are mm -hmm. underrated. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to all the, the expensive, fancy stuff that we're seeing on the market these days. Overrated. I think it's all all hype and trend. Ooh, you heard it here first. Banana ketchup. Is that overrated or underrated? Oh man, I would say underrated because it goes well with a lot of, a lot of uh, Filipino dishes that I've had. And it's, I think it's just better than ketchup itself. And the banana, the banana part of it really fits the Filipino dish or the Filipino cuisine style. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? I'm also going to say underrated. I think that, it, yeah, it is used, you know, in a lot of different things. I've seen some people will hate Filipino spaghetti, you know, yeah. the sweetness, but yeah. I've seen banana ketchup in spaghetti. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've also, you know, you see it used in barbecue skewers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and also just a really good dipping sauce for lumpia too. Oh yeah. So it is very sure. versatile. Um, but the only thing I have with banana ketchup is that most of the times there's no banana. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's, you know, it's sweet ketchup, but yeah. also, um, is it just sugar? We have a, where's the banana? <laughs> Look at the ingredients. You'll rarely find a banana in a banana ketchup. So on to the next one, we have Filipino spaghetti. Oh, like you just mentioned, speaking of overrated or underrated. I'm gonna let you go first on this one. 
Oh man. Okay. <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna say that Filipino spaghetti is overrated. Mm, okay. <laughs> Why is it overrated? I, I think it's over. I think you know a lot of you know Filipinos will say that Filipino spaghetti is really good, but I think it can be you know really sweet if mm. you're not really accustomed to that uh, kind of flavor profile. Man, overrated. You heard it here. I also think it's overrated Ooh. because I think it's just too sweet for me, even though I did have a lot of it as a kid. As a kid, I really enjoyed it, but back then I really enjoyed sugar. But growing up, it's like, it's just too sweet to be to be eaten by itself. Of course, when you go to Jalabi, you have Filipino spaghetti along with chicken, which is salty. So they kind of balance it out. Mm. But by itself, it's just, I don't know, that, I think, I believe they just add too much sugar. <laughs> uh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. You get like this crispy, salty chicken, right. and then you have like, yeah, the soft, like sweet spaghetti. Yeah. Sinigang, overrated or underrated? I would say underrated. Personal bias that I really love it. Had it a lot growing up, and I still do love it right now because I do love the combination of sour and salty when you put patis with it. But in terms of global recognition, I mean, other cuisines have sour broth and soups as well. So mm -hmm. Sinigang is one of them that should have global recognition for sure. So oh, sure. I would say underrated. Yeah. Nice. How about you? I'm going to have to agree with you. So yes. I'm going to say underrated. Um, it's just one of those dishes that sure, like I grew up eating it, um, but I do find that a lot of folks that, uh, you know, who haven't had Sinigang that I introduced Sinigang mm -hmm. to uh, really love that dish too, yeah. you know? And so, you know, you don't really see it in, in menus uh, too much, maybe in a non-Filipino restaurant. You'll see, yeah, maybe some folks, like like a lot of chefs, younger chefs, maybe doing sinigang, like fried chicken wings or whatever it is. Um, but I do think that it does deserve more recognition uh, because it's such a, a great dish. Air fryers for lechon koale, overrated or underrated? I'm let you go first on this. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, let's talk about air fryers right? because <laughs> let's everybody's throwing everything in the air fryer and I feel oh, yeah. like, you know, they're calling it a hack or a, a simple air fryer technique or whatever it is. Yeah. And I'm all for it being like for you, maybe, you know, for health purposes, they want to use less oil, but you cannot make lechon koali in an air fryer. <laughs> I don't know. You can't make a good one, at least in my right. opinion. You know, I think it needs to have a lot of fat right. and needs to be deep fried and all of that. So I want to say, you know, if I come across a lechon koi recipe, or when I do, it's definitely overrated to me. Oh yeah. How about you? I would say overrated because lechon koi is definitely not a dish that you make in an air fryer. Of course, air fryers are very convenient, but there are select only a select dishes that would go well in an air fryer with it, that is made with convenience. But lechon koi is not one of them. So I would say overrated in an air fryer. I was gonna say, if you said it was underrated, I don't know if we can be friends with my <laughs> Oh man. And that concludes overrated or underrated. And on to the next one, what's your favorite? And we'll start off with a favorite holo holo topping. Oh, okay. Favorite holo holo topping. Mm. I'm gonna say for me, I enjoy a good leche flan in there. Oh. Uh, to me, I think that, you know, I can care less about the beans and the right. jellies. Yeah. For me, what makes halo 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 is the sh crushed ice, mm -hmm. the evaporated milk, yeah. the leche flan, the ice cream, mm -hmm. and the pinna pig. So I like all of those. All of those? Man. And That's the beans are, <laughs> it's just extra for me. How about yep. you? I would say the ube ice cream uh, served at the top of Halo Halo. That would be my favorite because ube is definitely my favorite flavor, and it's just it's the first thing you eat, so mm. <laughs> that's my favorite. But other, if not ube ice cream, I would say uh, any jelly, any of those sweet jellies like nata de coco. That's that would be my favorite because I love chewing on them while eating it with crushed ice, like Ooh. crunchy and jelly. So perfect combo. Bonus question: What's your worst? or least liked hala hala topping? Would it be the beans? <laughs> <laughs> I would say red beans. Ooh, red yeah, beans. Sweet red bean. It, it's, it has its, it's good on other on other desserts, but I don't like it on hala hala. I'm gonna say, I don't really care for the jellies. Mm. The jellies are kind of whatever to me. Right. So any of the jellies, but I do like the beans. I think the mm. beans kind of has like a nice, uh, adds a nice kind of um, like texture to yeah. it that makes it kind of like, I don't know, almost like you're eating like uh, 
It's like a dessert element to it. Like yeah, when you bite dessert, on it. it's like another type of texture right. you know, that you're getting in there. Yeah. yeah. Favorite cooking shortcut. So uh, pre-cut vegetables or pre-marinated meat? I would say pre-marinated meat because Tocino growing up was a uh, was cooked often, so I'm sure that was a time saver. So I guess it's biased towards to see, liking Tocino. So I would say pre-marinated meat. Mm, yeah, same. So favorite you know cooking shortcut: pre-marinated meats. Uh, really, just you know, you get the most bang for your buck there. Yep. With the marinating, uh, and just you can even take like a cheap cut of meat and marinate mm-hmm. it ahead of time. And yeah, just have really good flavor. Pre-cut vegetables, you know, I feel like we can chop pretty fast. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't really think it's going to save us that much time. <laughs> Moving on to the next, best comfort food, arroscaldo or champorado? What would you say? Ooh. For me, arroscaldo all the way. Mm. I'm definitely more of a, uh, more of a savory, you know, person. Yeah. So, you know, I know that champorado can also be enjoyed just like savory with like the fried rice, right. the fried Ooh. fish and stuff. Yeah. But I think that um, I love just that ginger, mm. you know, the ginger, the chicken broth and all the good flavors, the garlic and, and, the, yeah. and the green onions, all of that, I think just makes a really nice, comforting, oh, man. Uh, homey meal. I would say champorado because I do like sweet and I my favorite part is when you pour the milk on top of the champorado and you just get to mix it and eat it. Do you like adding the little fish on there too? When I was a kid, I did not. But growing up, I started to like it because I didn't like too much sweet on my champorado. But adding the saltiness in there uh, really helped me uh, appreciate champorado more. Favorite Filipino pantry staple? Soy sauce or vinegar? <laughs> oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> yeah. Especially in Filipino cooking. Um, I'm going to say a favorite between the two is soy sauce. I think mm-hmm. soy sauce can be used more, you know, versatile, versatile, versatile right. <laughs> compared to vinegar. Yep. And so, you know, with that, you know, I'd say soy sauce. It's just, you can have it in almost everything. Yeah, definitely. I would say soy sauce as well, because there's, like you said, same reasoning as you. You just use it for many more dishes compared to vinegar. And lastly, our favorite kitchen gadget, koale or rice cooker, which is, koale is also a wok for more essential Filipino cooking. What would you say? Ooh, okay. (laughs) <laughs> for me, it's hands down a wok, so koale, because for me, to me, you know, I know a rice cooker is essential. <laughs> well, I actually don't have a rice cooker, true yeah, story. I don't yeah. have a rice cooker. I always cook my rice on the stove, right? Um, just because I find that rice cookers, uh, depending on the size, it can really take up a lot of counter space. Yeah, exactly. And so for me, you know, I can always just make rice on the stove. Yeah. Sure, you can't really just like set it and forget it. Yeah. But I think it's worth it. Uh, worth having extra space. Yeah. And the wok is so versatile. I know you can fry, you can steam, uh, you can saute. Uh, wok is actually one of my favorite, um, you know, cooking uh, pans or equipment. So nice. I'm going with the wok. How about yourself? I would say wok as well, because rice cooker does take up a lot of space. Like you mentioned, it did take up a lot of space in the cabinets when we store it. <laughs> so when we moved new houses, we got rid of our rice cooker and we just cooked cooked rice exclusively on the stove top. Wow. So, and that is it for what's your favorite. Moving on to the next and our last, our favorite brands. We'll start off Jollibee or Max's. (laughs) Oh, okay. Jollibee. (laughs) Oh, easy. No debate. I think think Jollibee's fried chicken is so good. Super tasty. I love their cheap gravy, whatever is in there. It's like (laughs) coagulated. It's it's like really thick gravy. It's so tasty. Yeah. Um, and I, I know sometimes I find depending on the maxes that you go to, hmm. it's not as consistent. I frequent at least two maxes. Yeah. And each place is, you know, one place is better than the other for sure. I'm not going to say where. But. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense because Jollibee, for the most part, is pretty consistent throughout each location. You have to be, right? Yeah. You have a chain like that. Right? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, for me, it's Jollibee as well because you can't beat a chicken joy and a spaghetti and Peach mango pie, pineapple juice, all of that. Next up, Mang Tomas or Mamacitas? Ooh, I would go with Mang Tomas because I've used the lechon sauce more than any other Filipino sauce, even more than banana ketchup. So I'm gonna go with Mang Tomas because lechon is not complete without their sauce. Mm. For me, I'm gonna go with Mang Tomas. I think it's just something that, yeah, like you mentioned, you can dip it in a lot of different things. Yeah. Uh, very versatile, whereas Mamacitas is 
sometimes I kind of feel like I'm cheating when I'm like adding that in there. Yeah. You know, like yeah. if you're making like a caldereta or something and it's like powdered, but, <laughs> but yeah, bangtamas all the way. All right. Moving on to the last, we have Filipino snacks, chippy or piatos. Oh man, that's an easy one for me. That's chippy all the way. Ooh. You know, I love chippy so much. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, I used to buy all sorts of flavors. Red or blue for you? Red. Red. <laughs> <laughs> I do. For me, when I see chippy, I see more of the... I see it as the red bag as yeah. well, whenever I walk into the grocery. Interesting. I wonder too if you know that, that study of like how red colors mm. and like orange kind of, kind yeah. of stimulate the appetite or yeah. blue suppresses it. Yeah. So I wonder if that has anything to do with why, you know, we don't really remember the blue. <laughs> That's right. That's why even for Doritos, I prefer the red bag over the blue uh, bag. Over the Cool Ranch. Yeah. Oh, actually, that's a good point because yeah. I actually prefer Cool Ranch yeah. over the red one. Interesting. So. Doritos just, they got to figure it out. You know? <laughs> and that is it for your favorite brands, but we do have a bonus question. What is your favorite Filipino chips bag besides these two? Besides Chippy or Piatos, what is your favorite Filipino chips? Oh, man. Chippy might be up there. Ooh. So if not Chippy, I would definitely love these. Like, have you ever had those sweet corn balls? Yes. And I forgot the name, but those little sweet corn balls I used to always buy. Oh, I, I always buy. That was gonna be my answer. It's oh. called a uh, golden sweet corn. Oh, that's the, it. That's, that's, that's exactly the one. It. Oh yeah. They get it right when it comes to sweetness, but also with a little saltiness in there, mm-hmm. and then the texture of the those those uh, chip balls. Yeah. Don't, don't you just remember putting like that like the little the chip in your mouth, yeah. and then like. Almost as if you can like inhale that yeah. air of like, <laughs> oh yeah, oh man, that's like some beautiful like food engineering there. <laughs> oh yeah, they got the combination right. That was uh, that was so good. Yeah, it has a similar texture to a uh, Cheeto puff. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's exactly it. Well, since my answer was taken, I'm about to go for another one, <laughs> and I would say roller coaster potato rings, and I, that was one of my favorites growing up. Besides sweet corn, now, have have you had that? No, I've never ring. read that. They're shaped like just little rings this big. And they're, I guess what made them good was that they're fun to eat and it didn't feel like chips. It didn't, it didn't feel like you were overloading yourself with big pieces of chips, but rather just small rings. Oh. So it's like eating savory cereal. Oh, okay. It, it, was, uh, it was unique. <laughs> but yeah, roller coaster potato rings. That's my favorite. And that is it for the great plate debate where we debated about things that are great. <laughs> on a plate. plate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and um, hit that bell to stay tuned for next week's video. Goodbye.